What's going on everyone? Thanks for joining me today. My name is Rory from RLL Woodworks. Today I'm going to walk you through how I make this rustic Australian flag. Let's get to it. I start by cutting this board to size, which in this case is 22 inches wide and 13 inches tall. I give a quick sanding to the edges to make them smooth to the touch. And then I use my normal burning technique that I do on most of my projects. For this flag, I've got a paper template and I'm using clear packing tape to hold the template down so I know exactly where to cut. You can use painter's tape for this as well. I then use an X-Acto knife to cut all of the stars and the Union Jack for this Australian flag. I also like to score the edges of the flag to eliminate any bleeding because that grain just responds a little bit differently to the stain. I use a Minwax water-based stain as well as this little half-inch chip brush. It really helps get all the detail. Here you can see I'm carefully going through being careful not to get any bleeding. And once the outline is done, you can get a little bit more aggressive. I do the same thing on both the edge grain and the end grain. Here's a little part where I had some bleeding, a little slip of the brush, but it's not that big of a deal. I'm just going to show you quickly how you can take an X-Acto knife and scrape that little imperfection out of there. Here I am coming in with the blue outlining the stars. And you can see taking a little bit of time here really goes a long way in avoiding mistakes. The Australian flag is one of my favorite ones to make, but it is tedious going around all these stars.
just finishing up the last one here. Then coming in and trimming out the blue parts of the Union Jack. And I love the way that burnt grain looks through that blue and the red. It really gives it that rustic look. And here you can see I'm just painting right over a knot, acting like it's not even there, treating it no differently. Maybe have to score it just a little bit harder, but that's about it. Once all the trim work is done, I come in with a foam brush and just fill in all the other parts of the flag. You can do this part a little bit more quickly. And sometimes to get it more even, I'll use the side of the brush. It's got a little bit more surface area, and I feel like that helps spread the stain a little bit better. It's amazing how much stain the end grain can soak up. The first coat of stain always raises the grain quite a bit, so I like to sand it down before the second coat, just to get it as smooth as possible, without taking off the finish. And here it is after a second coat, you can see how that grain really pops through and looks really sharp. If you see any variations where the stain's a little bit darker in some areas than another, those parts usually go away once you put your finish on it. And here I am putting on a coat of fast drying spray polyurethane. And after 24 hours, this will be ready to pack up and ship to the customer.
Hey everyone, thanks for following along. I have a lot of fun making these flags and I hope you enjoy watching me make them. If you want to go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button, it would really help me out. I've got a lot of projects coming up and so I really appreciate your support. So until the next one.